this video, I'll try to bring out the differences between grid search CV and random search CV in terms of how they are executing under the hood and also how computationally random search CV is better as compared to grid search CV. So let's start by importing the necessary modules. I've created a simple helper function called as timeit which measures the time between the function calls. This function would be later used to determine the difference in the time taken by random search CV and grid search CV. So let's import this function as well. I have a simple file called as loan underscore prediction dot csv. I load that into file underscore lock variable. I load that variable into a data frame called as df. Let's see how the data frame looks like. I have five feature columns and one target column. My target column is loan underscore status which has values between 1 and 0. So this is clearly a classification task that we are trying to solve. Let's look at the shape of the data frame. I have 614 rows and 6 columns. I create a simple CLF variable which defines or instantiates a decision tree classifier. So if I go over the CLF now, these are the default parameters of my decision tree classifier. Now mm -hmm. I separate X and Y values from my data frame. So you end up with 5 columns in X and 1 column in Y. Once you have done that, now I split my data into train and test where my training gets 75% of the samples and testing gets 25% of the samples. So my shape of X train is 460 rows and 5 columns. The shape of X test is 154 rows and 5 columns. Let's do a k-fold cross validation with 5 folds in it to find out how well it's performing in terms of the F1 score. As you can see, the F1 score is close to 0 0.60. That means it's not the best classifier that we could have thought of. When I try to find the F1 score of training and testing, I find that the training F1 score is really high for the classifier, which is close to 1. And the testing F1 score is close to 0.75. It's very evident that my model is overfitting. I want a model which is having a high training accuracy as well as high testing accuracy. Generally a training accuracy close to 1 signifies that you are overfitting but if you have a lower training accuracy but equally uh, weighted testing accuracy then it's a good generalized model that you've come up with. So in order to do that or in order to come up with that generalized model which fits well on your testing data or which performs well on your unseen data we'll be making use of grid search CV and random search CV to find the optimal hyperparameters that best describe my classifier. So these are my various hyperparameters that I can tune for my decision tree classifier and I am kind of chasing a high F1 score so that is where I define a variable called as scorer and I run the cell. Using a decorator of timeit which will measure the time that this function takes to execute I have created a function called as generate underscore clf underscore from underscore search which takes in my X and Y values, the scorer value, the classifier, the parameters and also if it's grid search CV that I want to perform or a random search CV and it outputs the best estimator that has been generated by fitting the X and Y values on the random search object or a grid search object. So I run the cell and now the next thing that I do is I try to find the best classifier using grid search CV. After running the cell, I get the most optimized version of the decision tree classifier for the given data set using grid search CV. Quick recap on how grid search works. Grid search takes every element in your parameters that you've specified and tries to create a combination of all of them. So one combination could be max depth of 1, min samples leaf equal to 1, min sample split equal to 2, criteria equal to genie and so on and so forth. So you will have 200 decision trees with different hyperparameters. So now if I try to find the cross validation score again for this best classifier, it has increased from 0.60 to 0 0.70. So this classifier is kind of doing a really good job in creating a generalized model now. Now if I make predictions from this classifier, the best classifier, I really have a high training F1 score which is 0.83. And I also have a high testing F1 score which is 0.86 which wasn't the case previously when I didn't do any hyperparameter tuning. Now you might wonder why are we even considering random search CV if grid search CV is doing a good job. Now the uniqueness in random search CV comes from the fact that it randomly samples from the 200 possible combinations of hyperparameters that you give. So it starts off with an initial guess as in when it finds that the guess is going wrong it tries to 
minimize the guess by picking out samples by randomly selecting a sample which it feels would give a lower error and thus a better performing model. So random search CV is not completely random. There is a lot of science going behind as to how optimization is done in order to find the best parameters with the least amount of iterations by randomly sampling the hyperparameters from the grid that is provided to it. So let's see how it performs in terms of the accuracy. Is it able to match up to the same F1 values that we get and how long does it take to compute as well. So let's run the cell and as you can see the classifier takes around 76.64 milliseconds and if you compare this with generate CLF from search which is the best CLF grid or grid search CV it took around 1200 milliseconds but this guy took around 76 milliseconds so you can see the difference that is there now let's check the scores again the score is really high in terms of what it was when we didn't do any hyperparameter tuning and let's try to make predictions out of it now so as you can see the training F1 score is 0.83 and the testing F1 score is 0.84 which is on the same grounds as 0.83 and 0.86 so we are able to get the same, almost the same classifier using random search CV, but in a more computationally efficient manner. This is the main difference between random search CV and grid search CV, wherein if you have a big data set, doing a grid search CV to, could take hours for you. But if you use random search CV smartly by providing the right set of inputs for the hyperparameters, you can get the best fitted model using hyperparameter tuning in the least amount of time using random search CV. So this was my take on how grid search CV and random search CV are different and how you can utilize random search CV smartly when you have a bigger data set. If you do have any questions with what we've covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos and thank you all for watching.